morning everyone and welcome back to another what I eat in a day so today is not going to have any particular theme other than it's going to be a great way to get so many of your five a day vegetables and fruits because I'm kind of sneaking in and introducing them in lots of places so that you're getting an abundance of different healthy um, vegetables mainly and some fruits um, throughout the entire day um, kind of without even realizing it or having it be effortful so I'm going to show you a lot of my favorite recipes some of them are meal prep some of them are not same format as usual I'm going to show you recipes for everything and include the recipe in the info bar down below so if you'd like to see more of these types of videos make sure you give this video a like and subscribe so for breakfast, I have the easiest, quickest thing to put together ever, which is excellent because I don't have a ton of time um, to go before I want to head off to the office. So I'm going to do two big spoonfuls of this yogurt. This is actually my favorite yogurt. Um, it's the Mediterranean style um, plain 10% fat yogurt from Liberté, which is a Canadian brand. Different brands make it. I do like it a little bit better than Greek yogurt. The reason being that at least compared to the Greek yogurt I can get here in Canada, it's not as sour. So it doesn't need as much sweetening. And it has a texture that's like not quite as thick as Greek yogurt, but still very thick and creamy. And then over here, I have my overnight faux jam. So I really like making jam-like creations. I've shown you guys how to make original, just plain chia seed yogurt with raspberries before. Um, it actually has more of a jam-like consistency. So I'll show you how I made it. There's one special ingredient um, that allows you to get this kind of really um, thick and satisfying texture. So it's actually a little bit of a different flavor too. I did raspberries and blackberries and I've been really, really enjoying that mix. Um, so I'm gonna actually add like about a spoon and a half of that to my yogurt. And of course, I'm going to arrange this parfait style to make it pretty for you guys, but the way I eat it is going to be all mixed up, you know, into one big, Pretty. I like the way the yogurt makes, you know, any jam that you add to it that's purpley, kind of like a pretty pinky color. Um, so I added some shelled pistachios. These are from Costco. They're one of my favorite things to make pesto with, so I always have some on hand. And I'm going to add some of these um, dried elderberries, which are awesome for your immune system. And I've had a few colds this year, actually, which is out of character for me. I don't usually get sick very much. So I've been trying to add these in to support uh, my immune system. I like adding healthy things where I can, but I would never do it if it wasn't tasty. And these add the nicest crunch. So here's what it looks like. And you can see the jam is super thick, um, which is actually how I like it with yogurt because then it doesn't thin out your yogurt. Um, and it just has a ton of flavor, of like berry flavor. So I just mix it up and it's going to turn this beautiful pale lilac color. And give it a taste. Oh, we have an intruder. What is this, you sneaky one? Giant BB, you're hardly very stealthy at this size, you know. No. Taste test interrupted but resumed. I will now show you how to make that and then I will see you a little bit later on in my workday. So I've been watching a lot of cooking videos where the cooking sounds are actually left on instead of muted and I've been loving it. I find it so soothing to listen to. So I'm trying that in this video and you guys can let me know if you like it. So I'm making the jam. I always use frozen fruit because it's so much cheaper and you know berries are prohibitive right now and this actually turns out better because you want the juice to make the jam. I add one tablespoon of maple syrup to a generous 
two cups of berries, then one spoon of gelatin. This is grass-fed gelatin. You could also use the fish kind. I'm using the beef kind. Um, and it just gives it that authentic jam-like texture. I like to add a little bit of cinnamon because I think it just gives it like a nice warm spice flavor. And then I add one tablespoon of chia seeds. So together, the gelatin and the chia seeds um, thicken the jam perfectly and you end up with something that has the flavor of a jam that you would have cooked with a lot of sugar even though it barely has any. Um, with my lunch I packed one orange and the following soup which I'm going to show you how to make. I meal prepped it the day before. So this is my Indian spice kabocha squash soup. I have shown you several times I think how to make butternut squash soup or similarly butternut squash sauce which is just the addition of cheese and a thicker sauce sauce um, but this soup I have to say even though it uses a lot of the same techniques is actually right now in my opinion superior because the um, kabocha squash is so velvety so you basically just fry up some onions and you roast your kabocha squash in the oven for about 45 minutes you want to really develop those natural sugars it's actually not that sweet as well as the squash which I really like I like to add garam masala cardamom and then a little tiny bit of cayenne as well and you always want to fry off your spices when you're making any kind of curry and then I know this is so gross but it's just coconut milk it always separates I remember a long long time ago when I first started cooking and I haven't always known how to cook believe it or not there was a time I did not know how to boil water um, I used to think that it was spoiled because it separated like that but it's totally normal and then you just blend it up and the fibers in this particular type of squash makes for the most velvety creamless soup you can kind of see from me pouring it just how velvety it is and then the perfect way to finish it is with a squeeze of lime and a nice handful of cilantro from work and in my comfies and I'm ravenous because I had a really healthy food day but not a ton of protein so tonight I am going to have some protein along with the biggest power punch of vegetables that I know how to make at least um, because sometimes I think you just want to eat something that's just filled with so much flavor from vegetables but you don't just want to eat you know just plain vegetables either and that's why I love hatatui because I think it has so much flavor and you can pretty much make it with whatever vegetables you have in your fridge this one is a pretty classic one with a smoky twist now you can make ratatouille with all sorts of diff different things like I said but I think a few things are really important like having onion and garlic and then you need some kind of tomato base so I feel like in some vlog in the past maybe vlogmas or something I showed you guys how to make it before and it had pretty similar ingredients but today I'm going to use some fresh tomatoes because I do have some really good ones from Whole Foods here so I'm going to use about half the pack and then my other tomato product that I'm going to use is going to be some good quality quality tomato paste. Now you can definitely use like passata or some crushed tomatoes in it as well and that would be fun. Um, I pretty much never will make it without eggplant because I'm a huge eggplant fan and it's a really easy way to cook eggplant because it never has any bitterness. It's slow cooked and all of the different ingredients melt together so it's really like melt in your mouth. I also like a lot of zucchini and I usually like to have at least one bell pepper so today I've got a red one and an orange one. What's not flexible in my opinion is my twist on it which is to use some smoked paprika. It gives the whole thing like this smoky vibe that ties it all together and makes it just like really addictive. And then the other thing that is classically you know not um, something you would omit um, is herbs. So I'm going to use some dried bay leaf and then I've got my freezer herbs here which I'm pretty sure are exactly the same herbs that I used last time in my what I eat in a day. So I've got some thyme. I've got some oregano and you guys ask like does the flavor change once you freeze it? The oregano I feel like is not as flavorful as it was when it was fresh, but it's still something, you know, it's still better than no herbs and you still get all the health benefits um, from it. So I've got some blackened, you know, slightly past its best oregano and then some rosemary and this chopped 
I cannot tell the difference, you guys. So I think that frozen fresh rosemary is much, much superior. Same thing with thyme um, to the dried version that you get in the store in the spice section. I think it's much better. And then I also recommend having some fresh herbs as well. I normally do really like to add parsley, but I don't have any. But I do have something just as good, which is fresh basil. And the basil, I really like to add parsley, but I don't have any. But I do have something just as good, which is fresh basil. And the basil adds a beautiful sweetness, and I think it gives it like spring vibes um, and a lot of like beautiful spring flavor. So I'm excited to add quite a bit of basil at the end. And then how I'm going to serve this will be with a spicy pork chop and um, I'm going to serve the actual hatatui itself over a piece of really good quality sourdough um, seeded bread from a local bakery called Small Victory that I have in my fridge. So sometimes I'll get a loaf at the weekend. I think I'm down to my last two slices. So one will be for breakfast tomorrow, one for dinner tonight. To get everything chopped up before you add it to your Dutch oven, I do recommend making this in some kind of Dutch oven like dish i'm going to use my big one because i have it out now but you could definitely do it in a smaller one as well i am really really happy with my beautiful caribbean big boy here um so yeah i'm just going to start making this it's actually a pretty fast stew as well like even though we're we are going to cook down the eggplant i like mine pretty soft and melty i've seen a lot of photos of hatatui online where it's maybe cooked for 10 minutes so all of the vegetables are still kind of like not crunchy but you know like not melty I really like my hatatui quite melty where like you almost can't tell like are you eating a piece of eggplant or are you eating a piece of zucchini they're kind of like all one that is how I like mine so it's gonna cook for about half an hour I just had a little bite of this already and it was the best pork chop I've had in a while despite not being bone in which is always preferable mm. so flavorful and juicy pork should never be dry 
and then the ratatouille you can see how like melty it's gotten mm. it's hot <laughs> The test is always the eggplant. It should just like melt in your mouth. Chicken would be good too. All right, I'm gonna go eat this. And I think that's probably about the end of this what I eat in a day. Let me know what you'd like to see in my next one. I think I might do like a weekend one of indulgent food if you guys would like to see that. And I will see you in my next video.